Hi guys, it's Sherry. So today is my third project, working on old clay and using mica powder to bring it to life. So I have the last bit of my um, gray used scrapped clay, and then I have this beautiful stamp sheet here. And this is from Create Along as well. And I want to try and see if I can get this stamp to give me these imprints here. So I'm just going to lay the stamp right down on it. And then I am going to push down. I'm not using my roller because when you roll it, it seems to slide a bit. But if you hold it into place and just use your thumb, it will work beautifully. So let's see. So just go little by little right down the whole thing. And I'm pressing pretty good because I want to make sure that these in, in are, <clears throat> I want to make sure that I'm getting some good indents here. So let's see. And look how beautiful that worked out. So how nice is that? So now my next step is to get my mica powders. And I really just want to go to town with this and see what we can create with this. So I'm going to use, uh, I want to kind of stick with all the same similar colors here. So let's go with these three colors. Or four, hmm, let me see. Yeah, what the heck, let's, ju let's just try them all and see what we could come up with. Let's have some fun with this and just see how it comes out. I'm just going to kind of go everywhere. A little here, a little there. And just see how it all looks. These mica powders are so pretty and I just feel like there's so much you could do with them that I really just want to show you guys that you can really create some beautiful pieces with something so simple. So we're going to see what we can get onto this slab. Let's get my red. I may not be able to get all my colors on here, but we're going to try. I want to make sure I'm blending this all real nice together. Let's do our green next. This green is so stunning. Oh, I absolutely love it. Because when you kind of turn it, one way it looks green, and then the next way it looks gold. So beautiful. This is honestly, this and the purple and the blue, <laughs> I just absolutely love. Okay. That is just beautiful. I'm just going to get my big brush here. I couldn't get all the colors, but I think what I got on here looks amazing. So I'm just going to slowly go over, kind of blend this all together nicely. And look at that. Look how gorgeous. How pretty is that? So now let me get my cutter. So this is also from Create Along. And I really want to use this cutter because I think this is going to look super cool together with all the colors. So I want to try to get, I want to see if I could get as many out of this as possible. Such a clean cut. I'm telling you, these cutters at Create Along are just so amazing to me. I mean, just wonderful. 
just want to make sure let's try to fit if I go that way I won't get any more in so we're gonna go this hmm. maybe we go this direction I don't know we might only get three out of this but we're gonna try and see if we could get one more but I may only get three and unfortunately only three now we can make some this is a whole set so we could make some little stars out of the extra and some moons so we can actually get quite a few out of this area okay So I have almost all my oak clay used up, which is super nice. Because I'm trying to just use up everything and show you guys that you can make beautiful pieces. You don't have to buy brand new clay all the time. You can use your old clay, your scrap clay, and make gorgeous pieces. You just need the right things like mica powder and I mean look how amazing these came out just by adding mica powder I mean just absolutely beautiful I'm not gonna do too much with these because I think they are just gorgeous on their own I just want to kind of Get the edges a little bit smooth. And there's not much that you have to do with these pieces because these cutters cut so beautifully. Now, I know a lot of people will take these and twist. So, I am going to do that, but I want to color the twist so I'm going to lay this right down on I'm gonna lay all these right down on my um, little clay mat that I use all the time and lay that right down these are so so pretty I am so thrilled with these look how that I mean, look how beautiful that stamp made these pieces so pretty. And then the mica powder really just brings it all to life. Just so beautiful. I love when you can take something and use very little to create something so nice. And you don't have to put a lot of effort into it. If you have the right tools, you don't have to put effort into it at all, really. I mean, just a little bit of time. Alrighty. So, now I want to see. Can I twist this like that? Everybody always twists these things. And then I want to see if I could get a little bit of mica powder. Since I have the red there, I'm going to go with the red. Just to kind of follow it. So I'm going to use my smaller brush. And I'm just going to kind of go down. And I'm going to paint the back of these. So with this, I'm just going to kind of go all the way around it. So I don't have to paint that. I don't want to have to go through the trouble of going around this entire section so I am just going to use my mica powder and color it right away I'm gonna get right in between here too right away I almost like them better 
flat like that than twisting them. If I give it a little extra twist, that's pretty cool. Let's see if I could give it this one a little extra twist. I'm almost afraid I'll break them off. Yeah, that worked. That's different. Okay, I like that. That's pretty cool. Okay, we'll go with that. <laughs> And then I think we'll do the same thing. We'll just twist it right away. Kind of go with that real cool double twist in the opposite direction. I'm just gonna be a little careful so I know that. And this one, let's go with some green. And I'm gonna make sure I get the inside again. There we go, super pretty. Okay, loving that. That one, I did much easier than this one. So, you and you can see the difference. I feel like that one should be a little flatter to match. Okay. And last one, because I'm really liking this whole twisting thing now. Let's go the opposite. And okay, and this one I'm going to do orange. So I'm going to take my towel and just kind of brush off that little bit of green that I had on there. And this one we're going to add this beautiful orange and just make sure you get in between. Okay. Gorgeous. I love this. Okay. Look how pretty those are. I'm telling you. So beautiful. Between the stamp and these mica powders. Um, I'm just loving all of this. All right, so I am actually going to stick this in my oven at 275 because I this is all Primo scrap clay. And I'm going to bake it for a half hour. Like I said, um, I don't know. Should I paint the back or should I mica powder the back right away? Maybe I should. You know what? Let's mica powder the back. Because I feel like it'll be much easier than trying to go through all of it and paint it. All right. Because mica powder, honestly, is much easier than doing the paint. And I think I might edge it off with like a silver pen. That'll look really cool. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I kind of want to stick with one color for the back. And I think I'm gonna go with purple because we haven't really played with the purple too much. So I think that's what we should do. Just to kind of give the purple a chance here to see just be careful that you're not going to get it on your front side because you don't want your piece moving too much. And then you're going to ruin all that work that you just did on the front with all that beautiful mica. So just go right over. I think I'm gonna have to use a different paintbrush because this one's picking up so much that I feel like it's gonna spread too much. There, you got some on the front there, which I'm okay with, but I don't wanna do it too much. So let's get a smaller paintbrush. And that way it'll kinda of keep it contained a bit. This purple, honestly, is 
I really hope you can see how beautiful this purple is on your screen because in person, it's just beautiful. I gotta tell you, um, Creole really did a good job on this mica powder. I don't know how you do stuff like that, but or how you create mica powder or where it really comes from. Um, whether they make it themselves, but it whatever they do, they are doing it right because this mica powder is amazing. I am so thrilled with this. I love this stuff. Now you remember if you're making, if you have this cutter and you're kind of doing the same thing I'm doing, you could change the color of the back. You could do the same exact thing on the back, do multiple colors. Um, for this video, I'm just kind of keeping it more simple and I love the purple too. So that's why I went with this. I really just want to kind of give the purple, um, give you guys a look at the purple because I wasn't able to use it, but I love it. And you can see little purple pieces are kind of popping through from me touching it. And I like that. So I'm not going to worry too much about <clears throat> that happening because it's kind of giving it that little pop, you know, just kind of like right here and here. And, you know, it's not all over. It's just a little hint. So it's going to work well seeing it real, like a lot on the back and just a little hint on the front. So that's working out nicely in my favor. All right. So now all my pieces are nice and covered in lots and lots of mica, like my hand. I just wanna kinda give this a little bit on the front side, it's on my hand. All right guys, so now I am going to stick this in the oven at 275 for a half hour, and then we'll come back and finish this up, okay? My pieces are out of the oven they look absolutely beautiful i'm super happy with them before i do my sides with my paint marker i want to glaze everything this way when i'm touching it i don't have to worry about the mica powder getting all over so i am going to just get my sculpey gloss glaze and then i am just going to go right over my pieces and I am loving the way that these turned out. I think they're so pretty. The colors look beautiful. Put a lot on that one, way too much. This Sculpey Glaze dries fairly quick, which is super nice. So you'll be able to do the front and back fairly fast. All right, let that completely dry. So what I did was I let my Sculpey Glaze dry and then I ended up putting my tiny Pandora, um, UV resin on here, the brush on one. And I did it because I almost feel like resin makes it almost more like a 3D look. It gives it that little effect. I don't know if you guys can see that, but when something is just glazed, it just has like that, you know, flatness to it, you know? And I really want it, since I wasn't going all crazy with these and I really want to keep these simple, I thought the resin would really make these pop a little bit more. And I love the way that they came out. So like even the star, I mean, it's it has that dome, you know, pop out look to it and I love that. So what I ended up doing was I put these together and I think these came out fabulous. I really, these are a fun, fun set, you know, like this necklace, I can really see anybody from a teenager to a grown woman wearing this. I mean, look how fun that is. I love it. And I really 
I am happy how these are all like earth tone colors. Um, just very, very pleased with these. I think this is a great set. And if you like butterflies or moss or um, moons and stars, this is just a fantastic fun set. So I'm going to show you how I ended up putting this all together. So I have my butterfly or moth. I believe it's a moth. And I ended up taking my little um, drill and I just put two holes. So I just hold and you could use a handheld one um, where you drill it yourself, but I just hold it there and then I am going to just put my hole in there. And then I'm going to kind of eye it up and see where I put that hole to kind of get uh, idea so I know I'm doing the same area. Oops, that was my fault. It's easier when you hold it down. Let me make sure. Okay. There we go. Okay. Then I take the bottom and right here where it has that little indent, I'm going to go right next to that and just hold it down and don't get close to the edge because you don't want it breaking through and i already drilled the star and the moon ahead of time so then you're just going to get chain so i have chain here and you just cut it as long as you prefer so like this one's a little bit longer than that one and I don't even measure. I just honestly just cut it as I see. So nothing has to be even. If you want to make sure it's even, measure it. It's up to you. I'm just going with the flow today. And then I have just a necklace that's already put together. I want to keep this project as simple as possible. So... I am using a necklace that's already put together that I bought and you'll see I do this in quite a few of my videos. I think this is the easiest way if you don't want to make a necklace from scratch and I just kind of measure it up from the two jump rings, measure it up, find the middle and then just cut that right in the middle. Get your jump rings. And I went with thin ones here. Put that on your chain, slip it on and close it. Now, with these thinner jump rings, chains do fall off easier. So my trick is I take a little dab of super glue and I mean just a small, small dab and I put it right in that opening. And then I let that dry. So this way the chain will not fall off. Do the same thing on the other side. Make sure they're closed all the way. You don't have to do the super glue. I just do it because I find that it helps the aggravation of losing your chain. And now I'm gonna let it sit there and dry, but I'm gonna keep my chain kind of away from that glue area. So while that's drying, I will take my other jump rings. Oops. And I will add these chains. And add those to my moth.
And these ones, I really have never had a problem with my jump rings coming off of these type of chains. I don't know if it's because you're not playing with it as much, but I don't super glue this. So what I'm gonna do here is I want to hold this out and I wanna make sure that my chain is gonna be lined up straight. This way I know how to put my next piece on because I wanna make sure this face forward. And that way, you know it will face forward. And lastly, I will add this one. Once again, pull it straight. Make sure it's closed all the way. And that is all to it, guys. So, resin your piece, just the front side, and then cut your chain, and add your chain, and then just super glue those little sections if you choose to, and that's all to it. Look how beautiful, how fun are these? I mean, I'm definitely gonna keep one of these for myself. I just think they are so fun, and I love that a grown adult or a teenager can wear these. So I really hope you enjoyed creating these with me. If you did, please give me a, th a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will leave all the information in the description. So if you're interested, you can um, create along with me with this video. See you next time, guys. Bye.